Uh, hello and thanks for watching. This is the W Podcast featuring Wolvie and Saucy J. I'm Saucy J. Uh, the W Podcast, everything Warcraft. Uh, Wolvie, you want to introduce yourself? Um, yeah, sure. So uh, I think the unique thing about this podcast is going to be first that uh, we're both healers. So our perspective and our mindset is kind of kind of go lean towards that part. And then the other thing is we're just regular players. So uh, I know that there's a lot of podcasts out there and they all include some very good players who are either participating in the raced world first or you're pushing very high keys. Uh, we're just regular players. So uh, I think our perspective and the points that we're going to present are going to be a little bit more down to earth and they're going to touch base with the regular player a little bit better than uh, what we see in the other podcasts. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. And uh, we can start with today's topics, uh, which is going to cover everything that happened in the past week. And uh, we had a lot, a lot with the Warcraft Direct and all the announcements, the interviews that happened, uh, and the exciting topics that uh, we're going to be talking about. Uh, first off, Jay, you can introduce yourself a little bit as well. Yeah. So Saucy Jay, been playing WoW since vanilla. Uh, love the game. Uh, played multiple aspects, multiple characters, as Wolvie mentioned primarily a healer perspective for the most part, but I do other things like DPS and tank. I do most forms of the game. So that includes PVP, uh, mythic plus mythic rating. Um, right now I'm, I'm in kind of in a funny place where, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing a little bit of everything on multiple characters, but long time player of the game, love, love different elements of it. And, uh, yeah, excited to, uh, express my thoughts and feelings on the podcast. All right. Well, I'm kind of the same apart from the PVP. Uh, so you have some uh, really nice insights there. Uh, but I guess uh, with today's topics, we can start with uh, whatever's on the screen already, which is uh, one of the biggest announcements that had a lot of hype in the community. And that was the announcement of the player housing. Uh, we had a short trailer which uh, showed you walking into your house and there were uh, st some stuff hanging on the wall. Um, and uh, I think a lot of players were expecting that. Uh, so what are your initial thoughts on that? I, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm excited. I think uh, player housing is something that's been partially tried in the game. You know, you think obviously Garrisons is a, is a big, you know, first thought. Um, so, but them specifically calling it player housing and, and having some of the decorative features and customizations, I think is a big, is a big deal. So my initial thoughts, I'm excited to see what they, what they produce. Okay, and you mentioned Garrisons already. Uh, I didn't play back in, in, in that expansion, but there was a scare that it might be the case where you have all the utilities in your house, you have the auction house, you have the guild bank, whatever you need. So you just lock yourself in there and you never get out, uh, yeah. which is going to make all the capital cities basically not needed in the game. Um, and then there was an interview, I think, with Ian who said, yeah, we realized that actually um, the capital cities are a social place where people can interact with each other and we don't want the houses to be uh, the garrisons. So uh, what are your thoughts on that? And do you expect, like, what do you expect from the house? Do you think there's going to be like auction house and stuff where you can just make a custom dungeon in the basement? Yeah, so the garrisons, I think, were... Uh, a really cool feature you know there wasn't it wasn't super customizable um you had like large and small plots that you can put different things and so there were some professional elements to it um i i don't it's been a while um so i don't remember all the little details but i do remember doing a lot of fishing uh in, in the garrison which was cool because it was just right behind you. you there was some herbing you can do um back there as well there's like a little plot for for like herbs and stuff um i played rest of Druid back then so I, I, most of that stuff's coming from the rest of Druid perspective which was an alchemist and herbalist so it was fun though it was it was nice to have a hearthstone to get you right there um you had a little tower that you had a portal that it could take you to um the main city and so you could pop in and pop out when you needed to uh, mostly doing missions for um you know player power type things um out of there so it, it was cool i don't have concerns with the aspect of killing cities because garrisons didn't do that so i doubt player housing will i i do think you know i'm personally i use instacart i use uber eats so i i can't expect there to be uh some elements of auction house in in inside of your house 
or you get stuff delivered right to your house. I think that's cool. I, I don't think it'll 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 kill uh, the population though. So hopefully they, they include that elements like that. What are your thoughts? Okay. Oh, well, um, I'm kind of the same because I did go back into the garrisons like boss factum after I came back to the game. So I kind of know what it is. Uh, there were some fun aspects there, but. I guess one thing that kind of bothers me um, related to the player housing is that the garrison was a template, right? There were, I guess there was a horde version and the lands version, that's it. You could like move buildings around, but it was not highly customizable. Let's put it this way. And one thing that kind of scared me in the interviews, I think that was the Holly Longsdale interview. Uh, she said, okay, we know that we showed you in the teaser a Stormwind based team, but there are more teams, so don't worry. And that is a little bit worrying to me because I don't want teams, you know? I want, um, and that's a long shot reference, but I don't know if you played uh, The Sims. There's like a game where you can like build a house and you can buy furniture and things ago. like that, yeah. Oh, my, my wife plays it more, but the point is uh, you can do whatever you want there. Like you can shape your house in whatever way you want. You can put whatever you want inside. So it's very and highly customizable. Obviously wanting to have something in, that much detail in WoW is probably too much to ask, but I also hope that it's not just down to like a template and you can just move the things on the wall. That That's going to be a little bit of disappointment, I think. Yeah, I, you know, you know, I've played a few games that have player housing, a couple that come to mind, Star Wars The Old Republic, um, and, and I, I think that they did okay. Um, Wildstar had very interesting player housing. Um, and there was an abundance, I won't say an abundance, but there was a pretty heavy amount of not customization, but you had houses that you can go through and select and pick. And that was cool. And they were very faction driven. And so there were certain ones that were locked off um, from whichever faction you were at that time, which, you know, so, so I do, I agree with you. I think that Blizzard is not going to allow complete customization of the housing. They're going to want thematical housing. Um, I think that makes sense because they want to keep it in, in the lore of the game. Um, however, I can see there being a lot of options. You think of pets or even transmog and, and, and the variety. Now, obviously, transmog has got years and years and years to work from. Um, but I can see there being elements of, of that customization uh, maybe from a sizing standpoint, but I think there's going to be some right right out of the box um, for money <laughs> houses that you can buy with real money uh, and then things that you can maybe earn through certain achievements um, and maybe some slight customization there. But I, I definitely think that there's going to be some limits. My My anticipation is some limits to what the exterior looks like and then interior, maybe a little bit more customizational. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a lot of angry people when there's money things from like the store, but I, like I I don't know. I think that's guaranteed. It's gonna be part of the game, but um, uh, it, it's going to affect us somehow. So how do you feel about going back into the old raids to farm like a recipe for a furniture or something? How does that sound? To yeah, you? I think that's cool. I mean, I I love the amount of content that the game made, and to just let it sit there and die is yeah. unfortunate and I, I like that they're reintroducing some of the dungeons we're going back to some of the older places in the game i think more of that needs to happen i think that's a good thing and i hope that they introduce that as part of the system okay well um last on this topic i guess we're not getting i haven't played final fantasy 14 but i know that the house houses there like a premium and only few people can get them I don't think that's going to be the case in WoW, right? Everybody's going to have one for sure. But uh, where do you think the houses are going to be? Do you think it's going to be like the open world and you can pick, oh, I want to go into like Mogor and make my house there? Or because in my mind, I just imagine this small island to the side and all the houses are there, kind of like a different chart. And if you want to go there and walk the main street, see all the houses, that's it. But you cannot just go somewhere and see somebody's house out into the open world. Oh, I, you know, you would hope that my hopes would be in a fantasy world that it would be where you can kind of stroll along and see somebody's house. Now, the, the, the fact is, there's just way too many people and not enough land and resources in the game to support that unless they were instance based. Some real and I'm world sure problems, that, that, you know. Kind of, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, 
So, you know, I, yeah, I think, you know, like the garrison was in the real world. And when you went to it, it phased for you, which is cool. But you don't have neighbors. You didn't have neighborhoods. Um, you know, you think about guilds and how does that play into player housing? Like, uh, you know, will there be like a guild house, which would be kind of cool. Um, I think of, uh, you know, back to when we had the... Um, the class-based uh like areas you remember it was that legion where you had your legendary weapon where you the priests had their own area the reds had their own uh the paladins had their own area the the death knights um you know will it be you know i, I think a lot of it's going to be instance based unfortunately i just think there's too much uh difficulty in developing an area maybe a, an island will be cool where it's like and you can go maybe there's a neighborhood based on a server or maybe there's a neighborhood based on you know communities you're in or guilds you're in i don't know that's that's something interesting i like the idea of being able to roll up and see multiple different houses and when you think about excuse me when you think about professions um and just getting back to like the town of like stormwind or orgamar and having the hustle and bustle of those towns, it'd be cool maybe if they integrated them there where, you know, you walked up to an island, one of the rows had been converted to apartments or houses or something. I, you know, I don't know. I didn't play Final Fantasy either, but, you know, I understand that there was houses and there was apartments and there was free housing and, and it seems pretty robust. And I could see there being like social, uh, social tiers among that. Like, oh, you, you have a house, you're, you must have money and, oh, you have free housing, you, you must be broke. Interesting to think about. I have no idea where they're going to take it, but I, I think they have options. And knowing Blizzard, I think they'll make they'll make some good. They'll make it, at least hopefully take a good stab at it. Yeah, hopefully, because apparently we we lost a whole tier for that, which was in my mind season four. Um, I was very loud about how bad season four was. I didn't even call it a season. Um, and I guess this is an excuse, but if that's the excuse and they nailed the houses, maybe we can forgive them for season four. That's my opinion. But uh, yeah, yeah, uh, limited budgets, I guess, you know, I guess they don't have enough money to have a team that can dedicate to this and, uh, you know, struggling on the money, you know, small, small indie companies. Yeah, always reference, yeah, exactly. You know? All right. So I guess we're going to get more information uh, at the start of next year. I think this is what uh, they said in the interviews. Uh, so we'll have much more to talk about. Uh, but I guess we can skip to some of the other topics. So uh Something closer in the horizon is the new patch, which is going to be released uh, in December 17th. Siren Isle, um, I guess you get a new ring, which um, I don't know how you feel about it. Um, if it has a huge reference to, I think it was the Forbidden Reach. That was the other patch that we got with the new zone and the ring. Um, I guess something to be excited for, but for, for a player like me, who is mainly focused on Mythic Plus and Raid, that's basically nothing new to me. Like I'll have to farm a ring. Um, I'll have yeah. to farm some gems for it. It's going to maybe change my gameplay, maybe not. But at the end of the day, you know, it's going to be something that I do for a couple of days, and then I'm just waiting for the next patch. Do you do you feel the same? Yeah, I think it's just a, a recycle of a system that's already been used very recently, unfortunately. And uh, the only you know, it's not exciting to me. I'll be honest. I think it it is filler. Um, I think it's content and that's good. And it's always exciting to get new content, explore the new zone. And it is fun to get gear and gear it up and level it. You know, I think I have my thoughts around that and how, you know, they didn't say a lot about how that's going to work, but I definitely have some questions and I'm hoping that, uh, you know, in the next few weeks, they, they announce kind of how it's going to work. Yeah. I just hope it's uh, old friendly because um, I enjoy the, doing this content once it comes out. As I said, it's going to be a few days until you finish it, but I, I just don't want to do it again. If I have to do the same thing on all the olds, like farm all the gems, and then there was a currency that you needed to upgrade the rings and the gems. So you could get the correct gems, but then you had to go and farm this so you can upgrade them. And that was a big hassle. Um, so I just hope you get it on your main, then you can like even warband war trade it or something so everybody can have it and you can just move on with your gameplay. I, I hope so. You know, I do PVP and when I do solo shuffle as a healer, uh, when I win, uh, which is often, fortunately, uh, you get a, a chest that's special because you're a healer and there's not a ton of healers in PVP, apparently. 
So we get extra bonuses whenever we do soul shuffle because basically the cue is dependent on healers. Um, in that chest, you have a currency that is used that you can is warbound. So I can send it to any of my other characters and it gives them conquest, which is super nice when um, you know, I start a new all and I want to jump right into PvP, I can just dump a bunch of conquest in. Now, obviously, you're still limited to the, the weekly caps or the seasonal caps. Uh, but it's still nice to not have to farm that out, uh, you know, on that character because it could be a grind. And so I hope they do something like that for the ring because I don't think the ring is obviously not going to be shareable. The power around the ring, how's that going to work? So I'm hoping that they do include some more bound elements to the ring because, you know, one of the reasons I love this expansion so much and why I haven't pushed deep into um mythic plus deep into pvp deep into mythic rating is because i'm on every single alt i mean i may be on a warlock for a week then i'm going to displace then i'm going uh to a resto shaman then i'm doing bm hunter and then i'm doing uh, blood dk right i'm doing all the alts and just having fun playing them not at a really high level but really enjoying it and so i want to be able to have that same experience for now um and and not feel punished because i have to grind out a ring uh yeah. on each one. Oh, i think last time that happened they didn't have the the warband so that is going to be a huge bonus and i think they're going to integrate it for sure because the ring pretty sure that's going to be very dependent on your gameplay style like it's going to be powerful everybody's going to want it one way or another uh so they just need to make it uh, easy for people who just don't want to go and do outdoor content just to get it and just go play whatever they want yeah my fear with that and i'll be honest and you you've probably experienced this or or are familiar with it um some of the communities can be toxic in the sense of item level and player power and unfortunately if your ring is not at a certain level that means you're casual yeah. you may not get the invite to xyz and so that's a concern with alts so um you know th thank goodness that there's Raider IO for Mythic Plus. So now when I get on alts and, I, and I'm a healer alt that has zero CR, I can still get into, if my item level is around 600, 610, I'll easily get invites to fives and six and sevens because the players that are doing it can see that my main's 2,500 or whatever. And we're like, okay, bring this guy because he's got the item level, he knows what he's doing, right? Um, you know, how is I going to play with a ring? I don't know. You know, yeah. but I know that's usually people will take a look at the ring as an element of like, is this person doing what they need uh, to not do? Not everyone is it. expecting your gear because you can see the item level, you can see the IO because there's like add ons for that, but I don't yeah. think the ring is going to be to an add on. So uh, okay, good, I, yeah. I can see your perspective, and that's a whole different topic. We can talk about yeah. alts and gearing yeah, later sure. on, but <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just hope they, they nail this and then um, you, you won't even be able to fly uh, at all times to this island. So I'm not sure how enjoyable it's going to be. Uh, again, there's going to be mounts, there's going to be achievements, so I'm going to go and do them, but that's not something that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, but we'll, we'll see how it turns out. Uh, the same announcement, and you said solo shuffle, so let's talk a little bit about PvP. It has a Plunderstorm announcement. Um, so first, I guess the first question is, how was Plunderstorm back for you when it was active the first time? I played for like a day wasn't it wasn't my thing oh. i think uh e e even as much pvp as i enjoy i didn't it didn't click for me it didn't click for me uh, i don't remember if i was i think i was more focused on higher keys at that point um and and it i again because i love pvp i jumped into it i just didn't enjoy it it, it felt it felt not complete to me it didn't feel um, like a completed game, and I just, I just, I, I had a hard time with it. Right. Not in the sense of like how to game it, but just I didn't, it didn't feel comfortable to me. I did not expect that answer out there that much. Um, <laughs> all right, so for me, I will say that I did not enjoy it, but the main reason was because I collect mounts. Like I do all the stuff that I do in trying to push keys and raid, but when I have some downtime, I'm, I farm mounts. So they had mounts and transmogs connected to the renown there so basically i made a small calculation and i knew that i have to play like 200 games to get them out and i did enjoy because i think it was really well designed there was some really cool ideas uh, i've never played a battle royale kind of game before so that was something new to me 
And up to like, because I think there was like 40 levels, right? Up to level 10, it was fun because it was new, it was fresh, it was different, I was learning. So I had a blast up until level 10. But then it started to feel like a grind, right? Because uh, same thing, like it didn't really click with me because I guess Battle Royale is not something that, that kind of vibes with the way that I want to play games. Uh, so there were like 30 levels now that I had to go through and play because there was a mount at the end and that was not that enjoyable. I guess that's a little bit of a uh, a look into the game because, as, as I said, it was well designed. And so saying that it shouldn't be there because I had to grind it and farm a mount, it's maybe a little bit of selfish thing to say. Uh, but I think that they could have also handled it a little bit better from that perspective. Um, I think they're trying to do so because they said that there's going to be a different way to play it this time around. So I think the rewards are going to be currency based. Maybe you still have to grind the currency, right? It's still going to be the same thing. But they also said that you'll be able to play, as far as I understood from some of the interviews, you'll be able to play with your own character, right? So it's not going to be, I create this plunderstorm yeah. thing and then just good. play with it. So that is probably going to make it a little bit more personal and feel that yeah. it's even more involved into the game. Yeah. Uh, because I've... one of the main reasons that I played it was that there was something, it was not WoW, it was a separate game, but then there were things from that game that you could use into the real yeah. game. It was connected. So that connection yeah. was important. And I think they're trying to make this even stronger, which is only going to play better, I guess, into the whole Plunderstorm idea. Yeah, I hope they do that. I, I, I dream of a day where, uh, I remember I was talking to two of my buddies about before Plunderstorm was announced or came out, I wish WoW had a battle royale where I could solo, duo, or trio with my character and just like a Fortnite or any of the other royales where you could go in with your character and compete. And I think that's a phenomenal idea. You know, I think back to the uh, the island, uh, you know, power player power, I think it was BFA where we had the, the island um, you know, missions and they had like AI bots in there where you could PvP against other people. That was so fun. I enjoyed that. And um, some people didn't because, again, it was a grind, a lot of grind in WoW sometimes. But when I get to play my own character that I know very well and, and I have my abilities and I can team up with people, that's I'm competitive and I love that. So if they do that, I'm all in at that point. I will be heavily invested in Plunderstorm. Yeah, I, I think uh, there's a lot to be expected in that direction. And I will say that um, although like I eventually I didn't enjoy playing it that much, I actually had fun playing because they had those tournaments where all the big uh, PvP players went and they had like teams, etc. That yeah, was actually a lot of fun to watch. Like uh, I, I watch PvP, I don't play it that much, but I enjoy watching it. And uh, I think the organization, the idea behind all those POC players in, into that tournament, into the arena, that was actually very enjoyable. And I, I guess they're going to do the same thing this time around as well. So um, hopefully they're going to manage it even better. And uh at the end of the day, you like it or not, I think it's a good addi addition to the game. So it's uh, it's something nice to have on the side. Yeah, love it. All right. Um, let's move to something that's, uh, I guess, a little bit closer to, to our hearts. Um, season 2 is going to start with 11.1. Uh, and uh, we had some announcements for uh, first the dungeon rotation. And uh, we're obviously getting the four dungeons that were part of the original set in The War Within uh, that are not part of the current season. And then we are getting a brand new dungeon, Operation Floodgate, which uh, when I've read it, the first reaction was, oh, we're getting a mega dungeon at uh, in, in the first patch of uh, first big patch of the expansion. But it turns out it's a regular dungeon. So uh, what are your thoughts on that initially? You know, I, I watched a few videos on reactions, and I personally liked the mega mega dungeon. And so, in the fact that, like, you know, mega dungeons obviously couldn't be in Mythic Plus because uh, it's too big, and then they usually split them into two. And they did that in BFA, and then they did that in um, uh, was it Shadow Dragonflight? They did it. I don't remember if they did it in Shadowlands. I can't recall, but um, 
but I, I like the idea of the Mega Dungeon. I know they did, uh, I, I can't remember the name of them. I know they did like um, Karazhan. I think they did the... Uh, the uh, Dawn Kar of the Infinites and then... Yeah, Dawn of, and what was the one in BFA? It was the, the Mecha... Uh, well, Mother the, the Load, right? The of... Uh, what was the name? I forgot the name as well, but uh, it was this oh, yes. uh, broker yeah. kind of thing, yeah. which was... That was yeah. fun, yeah. That was a good one. Yeah, I, I, you know, I like the Mega Dungeons. I think they're interesting. Um I, you know, and then splitting it into two is, is kind of cool. But I will say it's nice to change it up and just get a single dungeon that you could throw right into the mix that's going to be new for everybody. I think that's super awesome. I'm excited for it. Okay. I, I have actually a different take on this. Uh, I don't like the Mega Dungeons. Like, the idea behind them is fine, and especially Dawn of the Infinites. Um, Murazon's Rise, in my opinion, is probably the worst thing they've ever designed in Mythic+. Plus. But if you think about it from a meta, from a mega dungeon perspective, it's actually really good because it's like a small raid. There's a story. You go in there. You go through the stuff. All the cool design. You're flying around on dragons and stuff like that. From that perspective, it's amazing. Like whoever did this artwork and design did a very good job. But they, I don't think they consider that this is going to be an M plus dungeon, which you're going to be doing 50 or 100 times throughout the season. So now you have to wait for the dragons to fly all no, the RP no. and yep. all the stuff that's inside, right? Um, and I think when they're doing a mega dungeon, whoever's doing the work there is more thinking of, okay, this is a mega dungeon. So I have to give you this experience of a story yep. going on. And, you know, we're chasing somebody through the streets of uh, Tazavesh was the name. Yeah. So um, yeah, and yeah. that's fine for a story, but it's not fine for Mythic Plus. So, um, and and usually the Mega Dungeons get into the game, you they're introduced in, let's say, this season, but they're not in Mythic Plus, and then next season they split them into two and they become part of the Mythic Plus. And with this dungeon, although we don't know much about it yet, you're getting it straight into Mythic Plus, right? They're releasing yep. the dungeon and it's part of the Mythic Plus pool. So I have a very strong hope that they're going to design it so it's actually a Mythic Plus dungeon, right? Uh, obviously, it's going to have a story. Maybe that's good. It might have some RP, but I hope they design it. So once you go into there and you're thinking, all right, this is a Mythic Plus dungeon and I don't have to wait for five minutes of RP or fly around in dragons. So uh, yeah. I think that's that's something to be excited about. Hopefully, they, they nail it down as well. But um, that's that's my take on this. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> you hope that they learn from the mistakes of that and can kind of incorporate both elements where, hey, when you're going through it the first time, there's story, there's cutscenes, But once it converts to a Mythic Plus, it's a totally different experience. You're getting right to the action. You're skipping all the cutscenes on a mag. They're just pulled out of there. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, hopefully they learn from the, those lessons in the past. I mean, the, com the community was very vocal um, including you yourself and you I think you even timed like how much time it took for each one and how much like how much that meant over the course of XYZ number of, of runs and so I think that you know they listened to that and hopefully you know they did we did see that they made some adjustments for that um, so you know the fact that they have been listening to the community and, and trying to incorporate some of that feedback is a good thing and I'm hoping they're, they they went intentionally into the design here um, all right, so I guess we can jump to the uh, next part of the season announcements. And uh, first, we only got one dungeon announced from the old ones, uh, and that was the Mother Load from Battle of Azeroth. Um, personally, I was kind of excited for this, and I was even thinking, all right, they're bringing up Necrotic Wake this season. Why didn't they bring something that was a little bit more fun, which in my mind was Mother Load? And I don't remember that vividly, the dungeon, but I remember you could do some crazy pulls into the beginning. Um, then there was uh, the last boss, which was very engaging. I think it was only three boss dungeon, right? Uh, th there was the uh, machine guy where you, you could collect the coins, the last boss yeah. with the turrets, and then the middle boss. It was the spitter, the one with the ooze spitter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I think there was just uh, one point in that dungeon that was worrying me, and that was the middle boss, which had something to do with the dispels. I don't remember if it was something that only half of the healers could dispel, but I always get edgy when something like that happens, when you have a mandatory dispel, but not everybody can do it because you are presented yeah. with a problem. And sometimes yep. you can solve it, sometimes you cannot. Yep. Um, That's right. And and we have some of those uh, even this season with uh, 
uh, with some of the dispels in the dungeon or the double dispel in Siege of Boralus because, you know, it's much easier if you have a Warlock and they can do the second dispel for you. It's a free boss, yep. but if it's not, you're yep. just struggling, right? So um, yep. that's my only concern with the model load, but uh, otherwise I'm kind of exciting and it was, it was an interesting dungeon back then. Yeah. I, I'm excited for it. I know there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of characters or a lot of um, enemies in that dungeon, and so I know percent is one of the things that was always interesting to play around in that dungeon. Um, when you think about like you know massive pools and things like that, and 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 some of the areas like when I, I think back to the after that boss with the dispel, you had to take that little train. And that area, when you go down into that, had a lot of and like a lot of mobs, and there was multiple paths you could take through there. So I like that that there's some customization that you know players get to choose the direct route. Now we know there's a meta, and so players that study are going to study, and they're going to have their, you know, they're going to have their pools pre-designed and know exactly what they're going to be pulling. But I still think it's cool to have a little variation uh, in, in a dungeon. So yeah, looking forward to mud load. I, I always enjoyed that dungeon for sure. Yeah, that's a good point. Not having like a linear dungeon and having some freedom yeah. of what to pull and what to pull. That's that's always good. Um, yeah. So this is a little bit of an older article that I have open on the screen right now. But we also got the other two dungeons announced later on in the interviews. One of them is yep. going to be Theater of Pain from Shadowlands, and the other one is going to be Operation Mechagon Workshop from BFA. So yep. um, let's talk about Operation Mechagon first, because Ooh. this is the very first dungeon that comes back for a second time, right? So it was part of yeah. this uh, season where we had all the mega dungeons. It was one of the meticulous yep. dungeons then, and now we get it again. So what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I you know, I, it's I mean, we already had a couple that we've done twice, right? I think this current season. Um, with uh I, I don't know why uh, i got i got the cold fog but I, i'm pretty sure we had that as a mythic plus at least one of the the two that we have uh from the from the legacy uh from uh, well bastion right so you had uh necrotic, the, wake. Um, necrotic wake was was a mythic plus dungeon i don't know i you, you know we have so many other dungeons i think back to bc and you know when when you go through kind of the time walking events some of those dungeons I think would be fun to uh to experience in Mythic Plus. Oh, excuse me. I know there may have to be some not redesign, but some some tweaking that would have to happen for Mythic Plus in some of those older dungeons. But I think it would be fun and a challenge. <laughs> maybe too much time investment for the development team, and maybe that's why they they haven't been able to do that. You know, this makes me think back to season four of Dragonflight where you know, there was not a lot of thought that went into the design of the uh, of the seasonal um, uh, four piece or the look of the four piece. Right. It was like, hey, okay, guys, vote on existing things. Let us know what you want, because we're working on other stuff that, without saying that, essentially, uh, we don't want to invest a bunch of time in new gear and new thoughts around um, four piece two two piece, four piece. So just pick which one you want and we'll give it to you again. You know, recycling content, you hope they do that in the means of spending time elsewhere because they don't have to wait, invest the time to do it. So I'm hoping that, you know, while I don't mind it, I like those, I like both of those dungeons. I Theater of Pain was kind of traumatic for me because I, I think I was doing uh, Resto Shaman back then. And uh, I had, I had a hard time in that, in that dungeon. I had some trauma there. I had some some depleted keys and I remember the hook the hook boss was challenging for me um you know where the chains come across yeah you remember that one uh I don't know I have some trauma in that one so I'm 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 looking forward to tackling that trauma and dealing with it uh in mythic plus um and uh motherload I think is, is I'm I'm excited for so oh no not motherload what was the other uh, um workshop make a workshop Oh yeah, that was yeah. a fun one. I'm I'm looking forward to that one as well. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think the one. point for workshop is that it's actually not coming back for a second time, it's coming back for a third time, right? Because third. That's true. Uh, you yeah, are yeah. correct into saying that they were all Metic Plus dungeons in the in the past, so there's probably very little that they need to do to bring them back, but there were so many that they could have picked from uh that haven't been brought back yet. Um so I'm actually not that excited for, for playing this for a third time. 
I can see why they're bringing it back because it has like the goblins and that's kind of like the main right. theme. But mm -hmm. I mean, they could have they could have done something else. Like I, especially for Mythic Plus, um, if you're into the lore, you're going to play those dungeons once and then you're done, right? If you're not do doing Mythic Plus, so maybe yeah. it's even not that important for yeah. those people. But if you're doing Mythic Plus, I don't care about goblins, man. I just want good dungeons. Yeah. So. Yeah. 100%. Um, yeah. yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm not sure bringing something back for a third time, even meaning that it's that soon and there's so many things that they could have done is, is a good idea. Uh, and then when you mentioned Theater of Pain and the trauma and everything, I, I don't think you're the only one. Uh, it, it's a very hard dungeon. Uh, the Lich boss was also very hard. The last boss with the charges, you know, all of yep. these things were very yeah. uh, hard to achieve for like regular players, not puck friendly. And the other thing I guess we have to mention is that Theater of Pain is a five boss dungeon, right? So right. Um, it was, I think, a little bit longer compared to everything else. And on Tyrannica weeks, it was something that I would personally avoid most of the time because uh, it was that much harder to do it. Um, and uh, from that perspective, I'm not that excited because I think that with the current design, with the current dungeons, with everything that they're doing with Mythic Plus, Everything is hard enough already. So I would love to see a little bit easier dungeons uh, so that we, we can enjoy our Mythic Plus time a little bit more. And having hard dungeons just kind of like, um, in my mind, there are a few dungeons that I don't want to play, you know, from let's say the eighth that you have. Uh, there's always two or three that you're avoiding. I think Theater of Pain is going to be one of these. So having dungeons that you want to avoid is is just not not good for the game in general, I think. Um, maybe they tune it down a little bit. Maybe they make some changes. Maybe the affixes will help because there were some skips that you can do in there. Um, the, the PvP boss was also there, if you remember, and that was oh, yeah. kind of because yep. like good players could take advantage of it. Bad players, they would just fight there because, you know, <laughs> Uh, if you're in a bug, they just say, oh, I want the buff. And they start fighting and they fight yeah. for five minutes. And in the meantime, you're dying upstairs, you know? And like, you guys done? Um, yeah. And, Hurry it up, please. That's yeah. so funny. So I'm, I'm kind of scared about the design of this. Um, hopefully it doesn't turn out that bad. But um, just in general, looking into the uh, other dungeons, by the way, uh, which are part of the regular schedule, so to speak, um, I don't think it's going to be an easy M plus season uh, at all because, um, for example, Dark Flame Cleft is one of the original dungeons, and um, I I don't see the darkness at the end and this thing playing out that well in Mythic Plus, especially in Pugs. You know, organized teams are going to be fine there, but we're going to have a lot of troubles with those candles and especially the last boss. You know. Um, so that's going to be hard. Um, the priory is also not going to be easy considering uh, that the dungeon is definitely not linear at the start and you can butt pull everything with the mini bosses. So it's going to be a lot of funny moments there as well. So, you know, I was just hoping for something easier, maybe three boss dungeons because I really enjoy three boss dungeons. Uh, yeah. But it is what it is, right? So uh, at least we're getting five new dungeons and then um, and then some uh, some exciting old ones. Yeah, Pyrie is uh, it's it's my favorite dungeon. But man, when I think of the consecration, and you know, when you're you're working your way up to that second boss, and the amount of damage that does to players, and then and then when you go after you beat that boss, you go up the steps, and there's that mini boss with the aura, that pulsing aura. Oh man, that that's gonna be brutal uh that that i'm not looking for it and then dark flame chorus i i that's i'm not looking forward to to that one either so yeah yeah as i said i think it's going to be a hard dungeon and uh remember like what i remember from playing those at the beginning of the season when it was basically mythic zero and stuff like that yeah. um i remember them being hard at mythic zero right so if they're hard at mythic zero when they scale up and they're actually part of mythic plus I don't think they're going to become any easier and then you're getting some hard dungeons because even Workshop was not that easy with the last boss and all the design around it. Uh, even the second before last boss with the beams going around when you had to dodge the cogwheels, uh, also pug and friendly. Um, so I hope I'm wrong on this one, but I think we have a very hard uh, Mythic Plus season right now and the next one is at the very least not going to be easier. Yeah, yeah so fasten your seatbelts. Yep. yep, you're ready. Yeah.
Um, we had an Ian interview where he also talked about Metic Plus and uh, he addressed some things that they were uh, trying to basically fix in the game. Um, mm -hmm. Apparently, they are aware right now that there is a huge gap from going from plus 11 to plus 12, uh, which is basically where I'm kind of sort of this season right now. And I can definitely feel it. Like 11s feel like a homework key uh, as long as you have a decent group. You can have a lot of mistakes, still time them, and then you go into the 12, and it's like a different game. Like uh, you're getting yeah. like close to one shot at now, and uh, you, you cannot wipe because the timers are, are tight, etc. So I guess they're uh, they're trying to smooth out this curve a little bit, which is quite welcoming. But I don't see right now how they're going to do that um, unless they remove a bunch of affixes and and things like that. Um, one thing that I'll say say though is. I kind of enjoy first the fact that at plus 10, uh, you are getting both Fortified and Tyrannico at the same time. Yes, it's a big jump. Maybe that needs a little bit of a smoothing as well. But uh, the fact that you don't have Tyrannico and Fortified weeks anymore at that point is actually a huge win for me. Um, I don't know how yeah. you feel, feel about that. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, because, you know, thinking back to the previous seasons where you'd have push weeks and then you'd have weeks where you basically just take off because you're like, there's no way. We're not going to push the you know this specific dungeon because yeah it's way too hard. There's no and, point. And you know right? what? So what now... was the worst part for me? Uh, you have the push week, which was like the supposedly the easiest of, of all weeks, and something happens real life, and I just cannot play this week, right? Oh, I, man, I just cannot rough. push the keys, and you miss yeah, the push week, that's, that's and then bad. there's like three yeah. hard weeks, and you're like, oh yeah. my god, man! Now I have to wait yeah. another month. I missed my opportunity. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, I you know it's. Yeah, I like the change. I I do agree. And now my my keys, I'm stopping at ten. I don't. So I haven't even attempted any elevens or twelves. My guild does elevens, twelves, even thirteens. I've I've one or two players that are at like three thousand IO. Um, so they're I think pushing thirteens. Um, and then we, we yeah. So I you know, but I haven't experienced them personally. But I've heard the complaints and gripes. Um. Yeah, I, you know, I think they're, you know, I think that's part of the reason why I haven't pushed because it just feels like this big wall of, and I pug, even though I have 30 odd raiders in my guild that I can easily jump in with and just get, I don't want to say get carried because I can game, but I, I enjoy the uh, systematic process of pugging and doing sixes, sevens, eights. I like the challenge of that. I, you know, call me a glutton for punishment because like i said i have a group of people at the ready that that are ready to you know they beg me to run with them and it's like i don't i don't want to i'll, I'll do maybe one or two um lower keys on their alts but i won't run with them on the big groups because i just it, it's i'm just not in that mindset um but i do hear them talk about uh you know the big wall of like you know from especially from 11 to 12 and the change in the effects at 12 um and just the one shot and if the kicks don't go right the stops don't go right it it, it you know like you said people are getting one shot and it just feels like once there's a wipe or two it's like start over um and so i think there's some i don't know how long you want to get into the the, the key plus stuff but um yeah. just some thoughts around how do they how do they smooth that out right um so yeah, I have some thoughts around that. Yeah, let me mention that we actually had a plan for the first episode to be overall Mythic Plus. Yeah, so maybe sure. we can push yeah. those topics for episode two yeah. right now. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm just going to mention a couple more things. It's really nice that at 12, you lose the um, extra affix that you get. And it was nice in the sense that, for example, the dispel affix is obnoxious for healers. Like, I guess nobody else cares. It's a healer affix, which it's not really, but... Um, having to play at 12 is actually welcome in that perspective because you don't have to think, oh, I have to change talents this week and I have to get uh, the spell or CC or poison cleansing totem because I'm playing shaman, right? Uh, all of these things are gone. So that's that's very welcoming. Um, and then I guess the other perspective which you're going to relate more to is that uh, at six, sevens, eights, uh, it feels like when you're playing oats specifically, you're always getting the, the wrong crests, right? The gearing process is very, very hard at this point because you either need uh, the higher crests and you're running way too low dungeons or you're at the higher crest and now you need lower crests to update your gear up to that point. Uh, so um, I think they're trying to address that as well from what 
Ian said in the interview, although they're not giving any specific details of how exactly uh, they're going to do that. Um, but hopefully that's uh, that's something that's going to play out well, especially for, for bug groups. Um, and uh, I guess we can talk about that more in, in the next episode. I will say I have a hack on that for me personally, but it, it you have to know PvP. But in PvP, when you uh, get Conquest, you get, well, first after you get a couple wins, you'll get uh, a, a quest with some, these ribbons, and you can use those ribbons to create gear. And uh, the gear is, I think, champion level gear. And so you're not spending any any uh, Valor Stones or Crest. And as you know, once you get that item level, it automatically uh, makes everything else cheaper, right? Yeah. And so um, what, I, what I typically do is I'll just PvP it out get a bunch of valor buy the ribbons get the stats that i want because with those you don't just you could just buy the gear outright mm -hmm. but what you could also do is craft the gear so if you have a bit of gold you can actually craft with the stats that you want and you're automatic you're automatically saving all those valor stones and all those crests uh so if you do both there's a little bit of an advantage okay so that's a very good tip uh i didn't know that you might actually yeah. make me PvP a little bit, but uh, that's a that's a very good <laughs> tip for for the next episode as well. But that's also something that you shouldn't be doing. Like the system should be better yeah. and not force yeah. you to do stuff that you don't want to because oh, yep. you need some some extra quests yep. and I have to do lower or higher higher dungeons than my level right now. But that's uh, that's frustrating for sure. Yeah. So the, they talk about quests as well. Um, uh, that's a different topic. They're not going to change the way that crests work. I think there should be only one type of crests, uh, personally. So it's very confusing having four types of gear tracks, like champion, whatever champion means, right? I don't even know which one yeah. is the highest one, one right now. Yeah. And then have four types of crests. And I think that they should just uh, put everything into be like you have uh, one type of gear, one type of crests, and then maybe when a piece of gear drops or you craft it, doesn't matter how you obtain it, you can only upgrade it that many times, right? So what is going to matter there is what level you get it at, and then you can only upgrade that many times. And if they want to throttle everything and make it slower and you have more limits, you still have the crest caps. You still can like limit the gear. Maybe you can upgrade only once per week because the crest like hidden up and it's going to fall apart if you upgrade it too many times. You know, there's so many things they can do to simplify the system. And at the same time, it's going to make it much more friendlier because you'll be farming the same crest and uh, you're not going to be wasting them on your main and not having them on your ults. Uh, but it seems that they're going to be sticking to whatever they have right now and just trying to adjust it to work a little bit better, which I don't see it being much better than what it is right now but um yeah maybe uh maybe we just have to to go along with this for now yeah i think they're gonna keep it uh for a while and i'll tell you why when i think back to the original wow and leveling and how long it took to level um there was a grind and there was a, a certain level of complexity with I, well, maybe not complexity but there was a grind to it there was a, you had to earn it and I noticed the transition in the game where back in the days, professional was kind of straightforward, right? Where it was like, you, you level it and you get it. Maybe if you get a recipe, great. You're like, you'll craft for, for the whole server. But when you look at the complexity that they've brought into the game when it comes to professions uh, and the different elements, and this is a, another topic, but, but I'm going somewhere with it. Um, same thing with the gear. It, there's a diversity. I think that they want to um, have this complexity because there's a certain amount of understanding and learning that that uh, you know maybe you know uh, makes those dopamine hits go off where it's like oh now I understand so in order for me to to get to there I need to do this and I'll earn those and I don't know I just feel like there's like this this uh, carrot to chase and and if you want to get and i and i saw it because i have a friend that just came back to the guild or to the game after a long break and to see him kind of not want to be spoon-fed how to get the gear but to kind of hear from his perspective on doing the mythic pluses and and earning the crest and i even had a longtime veteran player who still didn't know that he could take those lower crests and upgrade them to higher crests he had no clue that that was the thing he's like I'm sitting on like 800 of these. What do I even do with them? It's a waste. And I'm like, uh, 
there's a mechanic for that. So, and he was, he got all excited. <laughs> so I think the complexity is something that the game needs. I think when you, when you kind of simple it down, I mean, let's be honest. Some, some of us players like to complain about stuff. I mean, the whole community complains all the time, no matter what you do. It's just part of the pain of the game. And there's a little bit of pride in the complaining. I often hear oftentimes where it's like, oh, I had the, I had the level and it took me weeks and, but they're complaining, but it's a proud complaint, right? Because they went through it. And so I could see some of that same thing happening with Crest and even professions. I hear the people griping and there's a certain amount of gripe where it's like, are you actually complaining or are you actually like, there's some pride in that because you accomplished it. Just, so just talking it's, it's and opening your mouth for the sake of it. Yeah. I, I, I can see that. I can see that. But at the same time, I feel that if everything is way too complicated, uh, it's kind of putting a barrier there for people to start doing whatever sure. it is. It, it doesn't matter if it's professions or if it's uh, upgrading your gear in Mythic Plus and things like that. Um, yeah. So, like, I agree. this is also a topic for, for a different episode, but uh, the game is not very welcoming to new players or even returning no. players. So from that perspective, um, you, you can say I'm complaining, but I think that it should be much more simplistic um, so that it accommodates more people. It's easier for people to get through those barriers and start doing whatever they want to do in the game instead of being afraid, oh my God, there's like four tracks of gear and four crests and then there's like Valor Stones, but there's caps, like what am I doing here? So yeah. it, it's it's so much that it's just intimidating at some point and um that's definitely that's something that they need to look into simplifying and they even said it themselves like they said that the names of the crests are confusing so we're going to try yeah. to simplify that yeah it's yeah. it's good that they see that it, but i think they yeah. they need to go one step further and make it even more simpler i know that there are some concerns there with uh you know people trying to bend the system a little bit and farm too many crests and upgrade too much gear but uh they've been there for a while now they, they know how to tackle those and as i said yeah. there's different mechanisms that you can put into the gear itself into the caps etc so to make sure that people are not cheating um but yeah i guess we'll, we'll wait and see uh one of the next topics is that they're going to be changing the rewards we're going to be talking about that as well so uh we'll see how that plays out uh, let's mention the the raid though. Uh, the whole patch is going to be called Undermined, the eleven point one patch, uh, and they mentioned this uh, goblin raid, uh, which is basically going to be the casino of uh, Gallywix. So um, it looks cool on paper, but what is your your main uh, your main take when when you saw those announcements? Yeah, I think um, I, I, I will say I like it. I like content. Um, I like when they try things. And so I'm looking forward to this. I do I do feel like um, there, and this will probably come up a little bit later when we start to get down kind of the conversation, but I think they're, they're leading into something. And I think this is kind of uh, a mini story to announce or lead into something else. Um, but it's content. I like, you know, I, I I played Goblin for a long time. I like Goblin, so I'm yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Oh, well, um, to me, it's a little bit weird because um, I I follow the lore, but maybe not that closely because uh, I don't know who Gallywix is. I, I guess I've seen him, but I didn't much pay attention to that character. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. so I know that they're going to connect it with the story somehow because we saw the the black blood from the old gods etc in some of the screenshots so yeah. it's going yep. to be connected to zalatad but so far to me it felt like uh even in this patch we are in the nerubar palace we're fighting some bugs and nerubians which was cool yeah. we had a cool boss but that also felt like a side story because you said this feels like a side story right that also felt yep. like a side story and i keep thinking they had this really nice teaser in the beginning of the expansion with the uh, Silithus, with Anduin, with the sword. And, you know, yep. you're you're getting excited. Oh, my God, what's going to happen? We're going to, like, unplug the sword and we're going to fight big bosses and big characters. Yeah. And then you get a bug queen that you had to fight. Yeah. So yeah. for me, that kind of feels like I don't watch anime that much, but... Uh, in anime, you have this main story and then you get 40 episodes of like a side story, which is a filler. 
and you can kind of like skip it and go to the main story, but then you're missing some content, right? So yeah. we we already had that, and I hope that the next patch is not going to be another filler because that's going to be an expansion of filler so far, and I'm kind of like lusting for a little bit more of the main story, main characters, like big protagonists and big villains to to fight. Uh, and it, it kind you, of feels are you talking like about missing. midnight or what, what, when you no, say I'm, the next patch? No, I'm talking patch. about right now, the next patch, because yeah. I, I, I don't want to be fighting Nerber Palace Queen Anzrak until next patch midnight. And then who knows, maybe until last Titan, because we don't know what's going to happen in midnight. So I'm, I'm hoping that there's going to be more of the main story, more of the main characters, and it's going to get a little bit more exciting than what it is right now is what, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, you know, I don't think, I don't expect much, I'll be honest. I think it's just, you know, I don't think they're going to touch on the sword at all, um, which is unfortunate. I don't, uh, I don't anticipate there to be much meaningful uh, lore impact. I will say I'm not a huge lore person, but based on what I've seen so far, I think there's just going to, it's just going to be a small, um, not even an insinuation but just a little bit of a of, of like a gap closer on maybe why some of these characters have been around and, and filling in some of that some of those questions but i don't think we're going to get anything significant or meaningful out of this next um this yeah, next patch just, just another teaser and and they did yep. mention that the sword is going to be like two patch uh two expansions from now maybe Illidan is oh, going geez. to come back so there's a lot of exciting things but they're not here right now. Like we're still yeah. waiting. So that's that's a little yep. bit annoying to me. Uh, but we'll see. Like the new raid definitely looks uh, looks nice. Uh, the goblins present some interesting designs that they can do with bosses yeah. and things like that. So that's something to look forward to. But I, I'm just hoping there's going to be more uh, when it comes to like the story and how the whole thing is going to develop <laughs> potentially. Um, all right, so a uh, few other things, I guess, like uh, uh, side announcements. Uh, we are going to get some improvements to the Delphs, and uh, Bran is going to stay, which was not the initial plan as far as I'm aware, but I guess they decided to keep him for the whole expansion, and now he's going to have a tank row and maybe some new uh, skills and things that he, you can use into the Delphs, but I'm just reading all of this, and I'm thinking, all right, Delphs... Um, they're kind of boring. Like, I'm sorry, but this is not an evergreen feature to me. It's just like a solo dungeon that you get into. We had to, like, we were forced to do it because the gear was good into the beginning of the season. But once yeah, you exactly. outgrown this, there's like, I, yeah. don't, I don't have reason to go back in there. It doesn't feel like a progression to, to push the higher delves. Uh, it's not interesting in the sense of you don't get any, like, there's extra skills in there, but it's like, okay, you get... 5% yeah. haste for one minute. Yeah, yep. thanks, buddy. That's that's yeah. it's not like Torgus level of, of customization yep. to the skills. Um, yeah. so I don't know what's your take on that, but uh to me it's just like, yeah, I think I'll have to do some delves when the next patch hits until I can actually outgrow them and forget about them for good. Yeah, I, I don't like delve system completely. I th I think like it's it's kind of, well okay, I'll say the fact that he could be a tank is a big deal because my warlock, my hunter, no yeah. problem. I can go in level eight, make Bran a healer, and just blast it out, and no problem, right? Then I get on my disc priest, and I'm like, okay, well, I don't need Bran as a healer. Uh, as a DPS, he's just too squishy. Is he actually DPSing uh, or is he FK? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's running off doing something else. Like it was, it was weird, and so I always had to, I always had to group up as my. As a healer, which was unfortunate because I want, I you know, sometimes I have an, an impatience. I just want to get through it um, and do it on my own. Going back to like having a full guild at my disposal and I can just make people do it. I don't like uh, putting that onto people. So I, I like doing it on my own. Uh, but as a healer, I couldn't. And so I'm always hitting up people like, hey, let's go do this delve. You can tank or even DPS. I could probably heal you through some of it. Um, so, I, you know, I don't know. I think... Um, like you mentioned, it's great for early gearing on alts. Uh, and at the beginning of the expansion, I think it was nice. Um, uh, it was fun. It was new. Uh, but it got old pretty quick. And um, and now I don't do it unless I'm on an alt. And even on alts, it's almost like I could just jump right into Mythic Plus. And, yeah, it's and, a chore, uh, basically. Yeah, exactly. I guess yeah. the one good thing was that they were a little bit faster and you can get solo playing them. You could get hero track yeah, here in your true. vault. Uh, 
but yeah, I mean, it, it's not, and I guess, what, for what we were expecting. And they even have an interview where they say that they're aware that the delves are not for everyone and they're okay with that. Um, and they just wanted to give players a way to progress a solo journey. But to me, yeah. that solo journey is kind of boring. And I guess there are people who are, let's say, not into Mythic Plus. And if you're one, just let us know in the comments below. Like, we, we want to know what's the ratio here. But um, I guess there are people who are just doing delves and they're having fun and, you know, uh, enjoying them. But to me, it seems like they, they missed the point in, in so many ways because they said, okay, the delves are going to be like the top of the cream because we've learned from everything we've done so far, islands, Torghast, uh, uh, et cetera. And I don't see anything that they've learned. It's just a boring dungeon to me. Uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's just my personal opinion. I don't know. Uh, I don't know about you. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I agree. I think, you know, I never went past an eight. Not once. I never did a nine, never did 10, never did 11, never saw the reason to. I mean, I'm not, I do transmog very, very minimally. Um, I'm not a mount collector. I like end game content primarily. And so for me, there was no point going past an eight. Now, when Torgas was out in, uh, in um, Shadowlands, I enjoyed that. I, I thought it was cool to be able to customize some of the abilities and build on those abilities and push higher levels i actually enjoyed that um and i thought that's what we were going to get with dells and it just didn't didn't turn out so i don't think they totally learned i don't know maybe there was more vo vocality from the players that didn't like torgas and so they tried to find something a little bit more toned down but i personally enjoy pushing content uh, at times and in torgas was fun i was hoping to get the same thing in in the delves oh you it's funny you say that because you say i don't think players like torgas but I haven't actually heard many people say I didn't like Torgas. It's actually exactly the opposite. I hear a lot of people saying, you know, Torgas was good. It had so much potential. It could have been made so much better. So I don't I don't find people who hate it. And uh, once we mentioned this, I, I can find it in my notes here and on to show it on the screen, but they're also in 11.1.5, they're bringing back horrific visions. Um, yep. So uh, before we get into that, I guess if they're bringing back Horrific Visions, which is like a similar game mode in the past, I guess we could be revisiting Torghast in the future as well. And I think the the, the receivement for that in the, in the community is going to be quite well. I, I don't think anyone's going to say, yo, I don't want to go back to Torghast, you know? So um, yeah. I guess that's something to be excited for. Yeah, I mean... I could see how the horrific visions ties into the lore. And so I, I kind of understand why they're going that route a bit, I guess. Torghast was very specific to um, Shadowlands. <clears throat> and I don't know that we would be revisiting it while I would welcome it. So, or a content that was like that. Yeah. Um, I didn't do the masks in... Uh, in the horrific visions i ran horrific visions but i never pushed it i know a lot of players enjoy the mask system um but then but then it became like again a chore to get the sockets right um so i you know i i wonder how they're gonna play that for this expansion with the revisited um with the revisited horrific visions not a reboot right so it's like we're literally going back to where we were no, I'm, I'm I mean, not sure because I didn't understand. Is it going to be exactly the same horrific visions or they're going to like shake it up a little bit? Um, but yeah, so for those of you who haven't done it, I guess, because this is basically exactly when I came back to the game, but I remember doing them. So you get into this dungeon, kind of like a delve, but instead of a timer, you have the sanity, which you can drop low. And if it drops low, you just get out of the dungeon to the point where you reached with all the rewards and everything you've killed so far. Uh, and it's designed in such a way that you can not get till the end at the very first visit. Like you have to progress this. And yeah. that felt really nice. Like the delve progression yeah. was like, okay, I changed from the drop down. Now it's not a plus three, it's plus five or plus eight. Yeah. And it's exactly the yeah. same thing. While in the horrific visions, there was the sense of progression. Cause you also had like the talents that would give you more sanity. I don't even remember if it was talents or like some kind of nodes that you're upgrading, but they give you more yeah. sanity, they give you more yeah. resistance, more damage, something like that. So it had the sense of progression and it was not like, oh, I can do this today. You know, every week you would get a little bit further. 
uh you yeah. would kill the next boss the yeah mm -hmm. you, you would upgrade your gear right so that was that yeah. was really nice and then at some point you get to the end and there were those masks which were basically like affixes like mythic plus affixes they would just make it harder for you to do it but then there were like achievements and i don't remember if there was like better gear or maybe you would get more currency or something at the end uh but all of that felt much more engaging much more interesting than delves like levels higher than what delves are right so yeah. i'm actually kind of excited they're bringing this back because it was a very interesting uh gameplay gameplay mode for me i actually did all the masks and all the stuff um it, it's also kind of like torgas you can go solo but you can go with friends so i remember like when i was progressing the last boss in one of them for the first time i actually went with a friend and we killed it and it was like oh so cool you know it yeah. felt like we, we killed yeah. like a mythic raid boss or something um yep. so that was that was actually exciting that's something that i remember with like good feelings right i don't think i yeah. remember the devs with good feelings but that was oh. something something definitely that's something that um is going to be exciting for me um and i'm actually more happy that it's it's not going to come um instantly on the next patch it's going to be 1.5 patch uh but I'm more excited for that than I'm ex excited for Delves. I don't, I can't even yeah. say that I'm excited for Delves. <laughs> no, I'm definitely not excited for Delves. Here's the question I have for you, though. You know, when you think about uh, Horrific Visions Revisited, there was grind and um, it was player power based because it 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 directly contributed to your cloak, um, and which was required for the raid. Uh, and you could say, you know potentially like a mythic plus element to it right even though there wasn't really like uh sanity but um but your cloak got more powerful and then there was a socket element to it so now in the game with war bands and alt friendliness the question is you know is it going to be something that is isolated to just horrific visions and so the powers that you get as you go through that are limited to that instance or are they going to bring those elements out of the horrific vision into the real world and contribute to player power we we kind of know player power in the past is not something that the community completely loves especially when it's something that goes away so what, what are your thoughts there i think they'll be a little bit scared to have player power at all connected to that uh but we don't know yet like i don't think they've said much in the interviews um if they do something like that, I think it's going to be very minimalistic. Like they're not going to go hard into, you have this cloak, which your whole gameplay basically <laughs> resolves around it and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you, you bring a good point because at the same time, if there's no player power and let's say it's just like some reputation and like a mount the transmog that you get at the end, then I don't know if there's gonna be incentive to do it. Uh, because you said, I, I didn't do Delves past eight, right? Um, I actually did like the whole Delves journey just to get like the rewards and I did the 11s, but um, I just did them for, for the achievement and I forgot about them, right? Um, while uh, getting a currency from the Horrific Visions and getting some currency from Torghast, I actually kept doing those after I did like the highest level, whatever, whatever that was back in the day, right? Yeah. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if, uh, cause if it's connected with player power, you're going to be doing them no matter what. Right. Uh, if they're not, which maybe is what they're leaning to, then how are they going to keep it interesting better than Delphs? And how are they going to bring you back to, to do them more than once? Basically yeah. is going to be and, an, an, an interesting approach to see what they, what, what they do there. Yeah, and for me, I for me because I'm so alt friendly right now in a sense of I'm playing alts and I'm alt driven. Like, how is that going to impact alts? Because, you know, yeah, I have characters that are. I mean, I got people in my guild that are super high, right? And I'm not. I'm. I, mean, I think my highest character is like probably six twenty five or something like that. Nothing crazy. Um, but you know, if I if there's a system in place where I have it's limited to the specific character. I don't know how interested in it I'm going to be personally in this state of my kind of gaming experience, right? I want to make sure that it's things that are are across my characters, and I hope they they're considering that when they're when they're developing it. Yeah, well, I guess we'll wait and see. That's gonna be a few months away, but uh, definitely something that I'm looking forward to. Especially yeah, if that means sure. that we're also going to revisit Torghast. Maybe like my hope that's gonna be the last thing I'm going to say here, but my hope is that 
once we get the horrific visions, hopefully they turn out to be a blast. Maybe we get a Torghast after that. That turns out to be a blast. And at some point they say, um, maybe the Delves are not the green evergreen feature we wanted, but we can replace it with one of them and then, then I'll be happy. You know, <laughs> that that's my hope. Um, all right, next topic. Uh, they actually announced, uh, and that's in the roadmap that we're going to show in a second, but there was a uh, section that said new seasonal rewards, uh, which we don't know exactly what it means, but um, to me, that means that, hey, maybe, maybe they can remove the Great Vault because same thing as people didn't say they hate Torghast, I I don't know many people who don't say they don't hate the Great Vault. I, I don't know any Great Vault enjoyers, right? Yeah. Uh, so maybe they're going to do that. And uh, what are your thoughts on this topic? Yeah, I think to me, when I hear seasonal rewards, I think of, um, you know, it, it's a it's 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 like a longer term vault where you know you do have to achieve certain uh, points, and at certain points you get you unlock something, right? So. And 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 oftentimes in games you'll have kind of the the subscriber tier, and then there's like another premium tier underneath, right? Yeah. If you paid for that extra one, you get additional bonuses. Um, you know, I don't I don't hate it. Uh, I I like there's certain times where I just like the grind. Um, I the only time I don't like it is when I come back if I take a break, and I feel behind. And I have to like do all these things to kind of catch up. That can be a bit uncomfortable. Um, but that's that's kind of punishment for taking a break, right? Yeah. So <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I, I look forward to changes in the game. I, I like the fact in general that Blizzard's introducing new things because that's the only way you can try it and get feedback from the community to see if it's gonna stick or yeah. not, right? Like uh, I know we've had a conversation in the past where um you've mentioned like them labeling things as evergreen. But it's like it's not really on you to la label it. Let us give you the feedback on what we think and what we like and how we feel, and um, listen to the feedback and build upon that and modify upon that instead of just, um, especially if they, you know I don't know how many of those developers are playing the game, but we are playing it right, and and we can give the most valuable feedback. And again, there's going to be some divide and differences in in that feedback, but you can look at uh, the general. Uh, kind of uh, feel of the community and and take it from there. Yeah. Oh, I also, like I said, great vault because this is my biggest uh, pain point. But uh, with seasonal rewards, I guess they also mean like uh, the mount that you get for like 2K IO rating. And then there's like a tint of your transmog in 25, which is not much. So maybe they're going to add more tiers. There's maybe going to be more rewards. So there's more incentive to keep pushing after you reach 2K or 25 or whatever that number is. Um, yeah. So I think that's going to be quite welcoming. They're also addressing the fact that uh, what I mentioned earlier, uh, you might be doing something, but you're getting the wrong crests. They kind of... Uh, kind of relate to this by saying that if you're just starting Mythic Plus, there's no point doing the lower keys because they don't give you the rewards that you want. So you basically want to start at plus seven right away, but you don't have the gear. So that's kind of problematic. So they're looking into that curve. They're addressing that there is a problem there. Uh, it's not clear to me how they're going to solve it uh, because just pushing, let's say the new plus seven is now going to be plus five or something like that. Just changing the numbers is not going to solve the problem. It's just going to move it into a different location. Uh, yep. But hopefully they can come up with with some ideas. And uh, again, to me, that's just having one set of crests and you know one set of gear that you can upgrade that many times. But maybe they have better ideas. Maybe they come up with something uh, genius here and they make it much better. Yeah, I mean, I like I said, I think there was a bunch of well, the the the. the the fact that they they reached out and said take this survey and it took me like 30 minutes to do it um you know they want our feedback and so hopefully they did a survey for something like this to kind of get the feel for the player community that that plays this a lot uh, <laughs> excuse me to try to balance or understand what what's going to make sense because it is it is especially like you said earlier for new players you know, us old vets, we, we get it. We know how to maneuver and maybe we don't memorize the names, but we know how to work the system and we know when it's uncomfortable for us to have to go back to lower dungeons to, to get the crest to upgrade certain gear or whatever. 
that could be frustrating so that feedback but also from the, the feedback from new players and what what's going to make it more welcoming because we need new players in the game like you know we can't just keep up with with the old folks like me yeah that's definitely a, 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 an important topic and i guess they're going to be changing things like we don't know how we don't know if it's going to be good or bad but at least they're looking into some uh changes in how mythic plus works and how the rewards are going to be connected to it uh etc uh, so um, I guess we can just jump into the next topic, which is this customizable car mount uh, that uh, people are getting excited about. And just reading everything, uh, it seems like they're trying to do... Have you ever played the Need for Speed, like yeah. uh, a racing game? They're trying to do a racing yeah. game inside of World of Warcraft, which I guess is going to be like an interesting side game, kind of like Plunderstorm, I guess, but it's going to be in-game. And uh, my take on this is if they do it well, then it's going to be exciting. It's going to be something that people are uh, are going to do. It's going to be like basically dragon riding, but on the ground. Um, yep. And then you have all these things that you can do with, you, with your car, like customize it, change the gear, change how it actually travels. Do you want to get more speed, more control, things like that. Um, and one thing they said, though, is that we're not planning to have a raid boss or a dungeon mechanic that involves the car as of right now, uh, which was kind of interesting to me. Um, but yeah, what, what's your take on this? I don't believe it. <laughs> How you don't believe maybe it? Not the first, no, maybe not in the first edition or like the introduction of it. Because, um, you know, when Dragon Riding came out, there was elements in dungeons right when it dropped. And it was cool. It was fun to be able to fly around a dungeon on your dragon uh, and to go to the different points. I thought that was cool. It was very confusing the very first time I did it, yeah. uh, but it was fun. Uh, and then after a while, kind of that 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 feeling of funness is like, oh god, I gotta fly over here and I gotta like manage my vigor and get over there, right? Um, you know, it's cool. I don't believe that they're not gonna have a dungeon that has it though. I I find that hard to believe. I I don't think because. I anticipate, like you said, if they launch it properly and it's fun and engaging, the people will play it and, and they will see, okay, this was great. Maybe we can make a dungeon later that 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 has this element in it at some form or faction. Yeah, you know, I think they, they even mention it in this way. Like, we're not doing this initially. That was like initially, which means that maybe in the future. It's just yeah, not going to be exactly. that season. Nope. Yeah. Oh, they also nope. mentioned, uh, kind of like a side topic, but they also mentioned that they're looking to bring back raids, kind of like Onyxia or Gru's Lair, which had like one, two bosses only. Uh, not right yeah. now, but in the future. So maybe uh, that's something they can integrate there as well. And uh, that's also something exciting, like because you're going to get new raid boss in the middle of a yeah. season or something. So I don't think there's yeah. anyone who's going to say, I don't want this, right? I think that's going to be nope. very exciting. Yep, that's fun. Yeah, not a lot of trash, not a lot of time. You can just jump in and, and have a challenging boss. Yeah. Always fun. Learn that's the boss, fun. move on. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. All right, so let me see if I have the updated roadmap. So this is what it looks like right now. Um, I think we covered a lot of those things, but maybe the main topic uh, and the most exciting part for me, and I say exciting, but there's going to be no season four, maybe. Uh, we, we cannot really tell from this picture, but um, I, as bad as season four was, and again, it was not even season for me, but as bad as season four was last time, I guess uh, that's actually kind of be welcoming. And that also probably means that we're going to be getting the expansion early in 2026 instead of at the end. Yep. Yeah, that's what it looks like. I, I, I concur with, with your thoughts there. I don't think there's going to be a season four. I think... Uh... Hopefully, again, they learned from the mistakes again. It felt like it was just thrown together. I, I, I didn't even play uh, Mythic Plus at all just because I was so put off by the fact that they um, used the same dungeons. They used the same tier sets. They used the same transmog. And it yeah. was just like, what are you even doing? Um, so I was very put off by that. And, and I didn't play. Uh, Mythic Plus. I just did PvP mostly. Yeah, there, there were no um, no even raid affixes, which was the very first edition, the Fated. At least it had some raid affixes, which kind of make it a little bit yeah. more spicier, interesting. Well, they different. didn't even have yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, but yeah, um, so, I guess yeah. the faster cadence as is, uh, is interesting. So uh, we're gonna be getting three seasons, a new expansion. Um, aren't you scared a little bit though about the fact that we had a very buggy patch? 
uh, just now with the 0.5, right? There were so many yep. problems. I don't even want to get started on that. Um, so this faster cadence is obviously something that they're a little bit struggling to keep up with. And obviously they're trying to stick to it. Um, what if they release an expansion and it's as big as the last patch? Aren't you afraid I a little bit not. of that? I hope not. I am I am afraid of it. I will say that um, with the workflows that go into them, I mean, we're both kind of, we are both technical. We both have technical roles. Um, and, you know, the thing is, is when you modify a pace, uh, there's a learning curve and there's going to be, you know, shortcomings. I anticipate the team to understand and kind of get through that, hopefully. I mean, I don't know any of these. Oh, I sh that's a lie. I don't, I don't regularly talk to any of these developers. And so I, I can't say from for a fact, like, okay, like they're going to get better. But I feel like, look, they, they announced way early on, like we're, we wanted to get more content out. We announced three expansions. We're going to be cranking it out. Um, there's going to be some learning curve and some pain points with a change um, of tempo. But I, I, my hope, and I, I have a tendency to be a little bit more on the, um, the bright side type, uh, that that they're gonna get, Don't get all. And, and yeah, that then and and it'll get better as we go on and they get used to this new pace and this new cadence and this new delivery. So that's my hope because if it's gonna be buggy with uh, desync and just just issues I, that's not going to be pleasant it's never fun playing the game when there's big yeah, issues. I, I like your take though i haven't thought about it from this perspective but i guess they're still learning and getting used to this faster cadence so hopefully when the next maybe next patch is too early but when the next expansion comes they're in a much better place and they're getting used to everything and it, it flows much smoother so uh that's actually a very nice point i haven't thought about it from this perspective um, my all technical, right. yeah, my technical background. I, I've experienced this a yeah, few times. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. So I guess the other thing is um, we're gonna get player housing obviously before the next expansion launches. Maybe the same thing as the early access. If you pay the premium package for the next expansion, you can go build your house, and then maybe we get Le Legion Remix. Um, excited about that? Me? No, I'm not a big. I'm a. I'm a retail Andy. Yeah. Excuse me. I I didn't do mop remix. I barely played classic. Um, when they when they when they brought it out, not well. I guess it would be yeah, classic. <laughs> the original one I played a little bit. When they did uh, when they did uh, Burning Crusade, I I played very minimal, less than classic, and I haven't touched it since. I'm not a big even the hardcore stuff. It's I love I'm a classic and or I'm a retail Andy. I like the current game and its current state. Uh, I like Mythic Plus. I like the raids. I have a hard time going because I've played all of these things already. Even with the remix and some of the fun some fun elements that they introduced in that, it just doesn't it doesn't hold my attention long enough for me to play it. So yeah. I'm I I think it's cool and I have a bunch of friends that are gonna probably get off of retail and go play that. And I'm okay with that because they enjoy it. And they'll, they'll pull me in occasionally and I'll go and they'll carry me and do stuff. But for me personally, not super looking forward to it, but I think it's cool that, that they're, they're continuing this trend of let's revisit some of these older expansions and, and relive it for some of the people that maybe started later. And now they're going back to it. This is the first time they played WoW, so they're going back to it. Those are fun. That's, that's fun. That's why I played classic because I remember the leveling experience and I wanted to play it again. And so I think it's kind of cool that they keep doing it. Yeah, I'm kind of on the same boat with you. I actually tried to play a little bit of hardcore, a little bit of classic, even a little bit of season of discovery, but it's like, I've already been there. All right, they try to spice it up a little bit with the season of discovery. You have this extra skills, or maybe you can do yeah. a shaman tank, but the game just felt so slow to me. And um, yeah. yeah, um, I will say one thing though, um, all right, this is exciting. There's people who play it. Uh, it's much easier to get into, by the way, for new players because it's it's yeah. different game basically. Um, but at the same time, I um, I didn't get engaged into that. I even thought that I'm gonna go back and play. Let's say now that they're re releasing Mist of Pandaria or uh, the Cataclysm, because those are things that I haven't played back in the day. I thought that I'll be excited and I'll go back and play them, but I didn't. I, I just didn't want to yeah. spend the time. And I think one of the main reasons for that is that these things are not connected to your retail account. They're not connected. It's a different game, right? 
And yep. uh, I actually went and played Plunderstorm because it was connected to my account. It felt like part of the game, although it was a side game. And I played a lot of the Pandaria remix because the characters from there, you would actually get some achievements on your main account. You would get some mounts and then they become part of your account. So I leveled so many things on the Pandaria remix. It had problems of its own, like it was not the content that I was expecting, but I played it because it felt connected. Right. And those things, they just don't feel connected. So I think that um, if there was some kind of a connection, maybe you go and play classic or season of discovery. And once it's over, whatever their endpoint is, you can either transfer to the next one or you can just get the character into your main account, kind of like what they yeah. did with Remix. That would yep. probably get me more exciting. Or especially if they had the achievements, because I haven't done those. I've done many of the achievements post factum, but um, I'm missing a lot of them. So if at least the achievements count to your main account or something like that, yeah. I would be more excited to go and do that because it, right now it feels like, okay, I'm playing the side game, but it also feels like I'm a little bit wasting my time because I could be doing stuff on my main account, on my, the, the retail account, which yep. is going to be mounts or whatever rewards you get there. And whatever I get on the side game is going to stay there and then I'm going to ditch it and it, it, it's kind of like I wasted my time. So maybe that's yeah. something they can think about um, to, to make it even more engaging because I'm kind of sort of interested to it, but in, in, in its current state, I'm, I'm just not going to play it. I'm just not going to play it. You know, I love that concept. And I think that if they do that, I will definitely play because there's some elite sets uh, for PVP that are really amazing. That you can't get it. It's, unach it's unattainable. There. Yeah, yeah. And so if they bring out, you know, PvP because these things have PvP seasons, um, you know, it would be amazing to go back and farm those out and, and get elite, get two K, twenty two hundred, twenty four hundred, and be able to unlock those on my main account. So transmog, that'd be amazing. Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a very good point because that would be sort of a fair way to achieve those. Because let's say uh, you're saying, oh, I'm missing that tra transmog, I can't get it. It would be kind of dumb to bring it back and you can just buy it with currency now or something, you know? Yeah, uh, so it, it, it would not the same impact. Yeah, meaning, it wouldn't yeah. feel good to you to buy it. It would feel bad for yeah. people who actually achieved it. But if they yeah. tell, okay, we're bringing it back, but now you have to go back and actually earn it the way that it's supposed to be earned yeah, exactly that's i think cool. that's gonna feel fair for for basically everybody yeah. right and if you yeah, obviously cool. it's not just you're gonna log in and get it you have to go level grind yeah. get the gear and yeah. then get the score so yeah maybe that's that's definitely something that they need to look into, into i the would future. do it for sure even the glad mounts and stuff because i don't have a bunch i only have i have two glad mounts it's like i, I would love to be able to and i'm capable sometimes i just don't want to grind it uh, I, I would love to be able to go back and get some of those older ones. They're yeah. amazing. Yeah. And even for me, it's not even about those things that I were that were in the game and you cannot obtain anymore. I would like to experience this the way it's supposed to be experienced when everybody's playing it. But I just don't have the incentive to do it if I'm basically not getting anything out yeah. of it. Right. If it's so just gonna be it's just gonna sit dark after if it's only just the achievements, I would be more invested into that. But right now it's just cool. like, yeah, you, you guys play your thing. I, I know it's fun, whatever for you, but uh, it's just not my thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm right there with you on that. Okay. All right. So um I guess we've been here for for a while. Uh we can end the first episode at this point. I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, we're going to put some links into the description below for our, um, you know, YouTube channels. Uh, we're going to make a separate channel for this podcast. We're going to upload it there as well. And uh, any kind of feedback that you guys have, any comments, any suggestions, they're more than welcome. And uh, hopefully soon we'll be back uh, with the second episode. Um, any last shout outs from you? No, oh, thank you. Enjoyed the conversation. Look forward to next uh, next podcast. Can't wait. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. And yep. see you next time. Bye.